ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Let's get ready to rumble! Good morning, boys and girls. I hope you've all had an amazing week. Hello! How are you, friends? I missed you! Yes, we missed you guys so much this week. And I hope you've all had an amazing week with no schoolwork. Yay! No school, no school, no school. <laughs> Ernie is very excited not to be doing schoolwork. So we did a lot of painting outside our house this week. Bailey and Riley even had to get, get learn how to use a paintbrush and a roller because Auntie Lazal had them outside the entire week. No screening, no watching TV, just spending some healthy quality time in the sun because we need vitamin what, Ernie? Vitamin D! Yes, we need vitamin and, D. And I had to soak in the bath for nearly half a day to get the paint off my skin. My skin doesn't like paint. Yes, Ernie was very dirty. So we would like to hear what you guys got up to. We didn't get any videos from you. The only friend who sent us a video was Emily. Thank you, Emily. I really love your video from you. But please, guys, I want to see from everybody. Okay, so today we are going to talk, be talking about where are we looking? Huh? What are we looking for? Ernie, not we are not looking for something. We are talking about where are we looking? But I'm looking everywhere. Is there a secret? Are we playing hide and seek? No, we're not. Is there a treasure? What must I look for? We know I, I, I want to find it. What must I look for? Where must I look? Huh? Huh? I, I can't see anything. Okay, so let's go to worship and then we can explain to Ernie what we are talking about. Okay, Ernie, are you fine with that? Okay. Okay, so let's go do our worship songs. Get your moms and dads and grands and grandpas and your big brothers and sisters. Drag them into the lounge. Move your coffee table away and have fun, guys. We'll see Yay! you after worship.
Let's go. Psalms 34 verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So now we're going to do it together two times. So let one number one. Let's go. Psalms 34 verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. One more time. Psalms 34 verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Can't wait to see my little class again. Hope you guys are all well. Enjoy the rest of your day. boys and girls so today we're talking about where are we looking i've been looking everywhere but i don't see anything that's going on here what are you talking about so if you guys remember last week we spoke about god's faithfulness and we learned that god's promises are yes yes and amen, amen. but and that god is faithful and yes. it's good and is good but sometimes when circumstances around us is so bad and everything just looks like a big mess we can't see anything good we are just looking here and we can't see anything good going on around us so today we're going to be talking about where are we looking are we looking here at our big mess 
Or are we looking at God's goodness and are we looking for where he has been faithful? Oh, okay. So, like, with the coronavirus, we, we can be distracted. Yes. Oh, I get it. So it's like this. Like, coronavirus is not a cool thing. And it's making everybody sick and scared and have to stay at home. And because of that, everybody's worried about coronavirus. Yes. And we are saying we have to wear masks all the time. And we, we can't visit our friends. And we, we can't visit our families. And our grannies and grandpas. And we are sitting at home and having to do all this isolation stuff. That's not cool. Uh-uh. It's, I miss my friends. Only so are you saying that these lemons are representing everything that's, that's attached to the coronavirus? Yeah, because lemons, lemons are chacha. Lemons are not cool. Like, if you taste that, that's, that's lemon. This is cut up lemon. Yes, taste it, taste it, taste it, taste it. Do I have to taste it? Yeah, taste it. I want, you, I want you to taste it. But it's going to be ugly. No, but it's lemons. You were given a lemon. Eat it. <laughs> Woo-wee. Is that nice? No. Well, but it's, but it's lemon. It's a fruit. It's sour. But they tell us that we've been, when we work hard, we must see the fruit of your labor. Was that was that nice fruit? No. This was a nice fruit. What was it like? Sour. Sour? And the texture was also not very nice. Oh no! But I like the color. Okay, because it represents what? Joy! Joy! Yes! You remember? <clears throat> okay, but I've got a clever little lesson that I want to teach you for a change. Okay, let's listen here, Ernie. Okay, so when we read the Bible, the Bible tells us that God lives inside of us, right? Yes, inside our hearts. Okay, so if God lives inside of us, and that means that we get some tools. Okay. And we get to use the tools that God has given to us. Because God is living in us and he works through us uh, like that, you see? Mm -hmm. So we've also got to know that with the tools that God has given us, he gives us lots of extra benefits. So like the armor of God. Who remembers the armor of God? The belt of truth and those sandals and, and all of those. breastplates. The breastplate of righteousness. Yes, wow. I remember that. Well done, Ernie. What about the sword? Here we go. Try that. So is this my sword? Ah! Touch up me! Touch up me! Wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. Okay, that, that's for the sword. So the, is this our sword today? That is our sword. Okay. The sword is the spirit of God. The word of God. Okay, so what are we going to do with And the, the sword? Bible tells us. In Hebrews, somewhere, I think 4 verse 12, that the word of God is like a sharp, sharp, super menorah blade sharp, double-edged sword. Because the word is the truth. And remember, God is the word. And he never tells lies. Uh -uh. That's why he's word. And where is his word? You remember, boys and girls? It's in the Bible. Okay. So we've got the word of truth. And that's a sword. Where's the sword? There's a sword. So what do you do with a sword? You just put it around to be fancy. No. You chop with it. Okay. Chop, chop, chop. So let's chop it at least our lemon. Okay. Are we cutting it in half? Chop, chop, chop. Here we go. Like that? Yeah. So now you see inside there's all that sour juice. So you take that and because we are living under coronavirus lockdown rules 
Everybody is under what? You hear Mama and Papa talk about it when they come home? Oh, I'm under so much pressure. Pressure, pressure, pressure. But I like to see it as when Jesus shows us love, it feels like we're getting a big squeeze. So I want you to squeeze, put some pressure on that, gonna... that sour lemon. Ew! You squinted me the <laughs> Ow! 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 It's burning! Oh! Woo! Okay, I'll squeeze all the juice out. Yeah, so you squeeze all the juice out, eh? Huh? Okay. So now we also get other tools. Where does God live? Inside of us. Yes, He lives inside of us. And God is what? God is love. love. And I can love you and you and you and you and you. All because God lives inside of me and He is love. Yes. And therefore, I can love everyone else. Now tell me, is love sour like a lemon? No. What is it like? Is it sweet like honey? Yes. Okay. So, is it sweet like this stuff? What do you call it? This is sugar. Sugar, yes. It's sweet like sugar. So, you take the sugar and you put it in the sour lemon juice. So, must I add sugar to this lemon juice? Yes. Okay. So, now the lemon juice is not so sour anymore. It's nice and sweet. Okay, it's all mixed. But it's still too strong. Taste it. I'm going to just put my finger in. No! Don't be a sissy! <laughs> Taste it! Woo-wee! It's still too sweet, eh? Very sour. It's sour and sweet all at once. So now you're just confused. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> it's very sour. But remember, we are still talking about the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And in the Bible... It says in John chapter 7, verse 38, I think, that whoever believes in me, streams of living water will flow from your heart. So, we're going to take some streams of living water. Because remember, Jesus lives where? Inside of us. Inside of us. So, we have got... Streams of living water flowing from our hearts because Jesus lives inside of us. You get it? So, you're going to take the streams of living water and add it. Okay. You see? And then we mix it all around. You mix it up. And what do you get? I think it's called lemonade. Do you guys think it's called lemonade? If you add lemons and sugar and water, I think you get lemonade. Are we right, Ernie? Yes, you're right. Because when the world throws you lemons, you must make lemonade. Yes. So taste that lemonade. I hope it's not going to be sour. No, it won't be. Mm -hmm. Wow! Cold and tasty lemonade. So that is nice and refreshing. So remember, we were talking, the world throws ugly stuff at us. And bad things happen. Like coronavirus and masks and not seeing our friends and family. All that stuff. But instead of sitting and crying about all the ugly stuff that's happening, you take those bad things and you use the tools that God has put inside of you because He lives inside of you. Yes, He does. And you make something refreshing and new from the bad stuff. Yes. It's kind of like Romans 8.28 where God takes a sour lemon and turns it into a good refreshing lemonade. Isn't that cool? It's very cool, Ernie. I love your lesson today. Cool! Yay! Well, I hope you liked it too, friends. Please send us a message to say if you understood and enjoyed our lesson. We love you guys. 
We'll see you soon. Bye! Hello, my supernatural friends. I had such a good time with you last week that I had begged Auntie Lizelle if I could come back and say hello. And today I would like to tell you a story. Would you like me to tell you a story? Well, I'm going to tell you a story. And this story is set in KwaZulu-Natal. It was the place where I grew up. Now, if you've ever been to KwaZulu-Natal, you will know that it is a place of steep hills that go up and up and up and then come down on the other side into a valley and then go up again. A land of hills and valleys. And I'm telling you a story about a little boy who lived on the top of one of these beautiful hills in KwaZulu-Natal. Now his house was right at the top of one of these steep hills. Now every day this little boy would wake up in the morning as the sun was beginning to peep over the mountains and he would put his head on the windowsill and he would look at the sunny hills on the far side as the sun touched them and he would dream Hmm, he would dream about his life. And most of all, he would dream about the house across the valley and on the opposite hill from where he lived. Because this was no ordinary house, he could see it from his window. This house had golden windows. Now, have you seen a house with golden windows? Well, if you haven't, I'll describe them. They sparkled so brightly that you could barely even look at them. They were glorious and beautiful. And the little boy was convinced that they were made of solid gold. And one day he said to himself, when I'm a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger, I'm going to climb down my hill and I'm going to cross the valley and I'm going to climb up the next hill and I'm going to find the house with golden windows and I'm going to live there forever. And one day he did just that. He was feeling pretty particularly strong and brave and he put on a backpack and he packed himself a sandwich and some water and he set off to find the house with golden windows. Now it was a very steep climb down his hill and it took him most of the morning. So he climbed down, 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 down until he reached the valley and then he had to cross the valley and start the climb up the next hill. <sighs> It was hot, tiring work, and it took him most of the day. And by the time he reached the very top, the sun was almost about to set. But there was the house. But I'm very sorry to tell you this. It did not have golden windows at all. In fact, when he got there, he discovered the house looked a lot like his little house back home, which sometimes felt quite small and cold and dark. These windows weren't gold. They were just ordinary wood and glass. Oh, you can imagine his disappointment. He very nearly cried. He had walked all day. He had dreamed about this house with the golden windows for so long. And when he got there, it was nothing like he had hoped. He was so weary and so sad. He just sat down on a rock next to this house and he looked over the valley to the next hill where his house was because he thought, I've got to walk back there. When he noticed something, something wonderful, something that he had never, ever seen before. Can you think what he saw? I'll tell you. He saw golden windows. His house had 
golden windows, the most beautiful windows on any house that he had ever seen. They sparkled like solid gold because as the sun was beginning to set, its beautiful light reflected off the glass in his windows and turned them gold. And he realized all this time he had been looking at the house across the valley thinking, oh, it's so much better. It's so much nicer than my own that he had never seen and never known that his own house had these beautiful golden windows. And you know, my friends, this is a lot like us in life. We do this all the time. We can sit and we can dream and we can wish that our lives were better, that our lives looked like somebody else's, that we lived in a different house, that our parents had different jobs, that we had different toys, that we had toys, that we went to a different school, that we had a nicer teacher, that we had better friends. Oh, and then my life would be good. But you know what? God is good. And he lives inside of us. And everything that he gives us is good good and he wants to bless us with good things and in fact he has given us good things but sometimes we are so focused we are looking across the valley and up the next hill and we are looking far into the distance that we don't see we don't see all the good things that he's given us right now. Or sometimes we are so focused on all the bad things that are going wrong. We are focused on the mean things that our friends are doing to us. Or things that are just not right in our lives. And that's all we see. That we, we don't see the beautiful things that are around us all the time. So I'm going to pray that your eyes are open to the goodness of God that's all around you. The goodness of God that is operating in your life right now and in this very moment. May your hearts be filled with the goodness of God. May your eyes be opened to see the wonderful things that he has put in your life. I love you. And it's been great spending time with you today. Thank you for listening to this story. Perhaps I'll see you again. Didn't you guys just love Auntie Jane's story today? I, I enjoyed it so much because it's so true. Like I said in the beginning of the lesson, we, we know now that God is a good God and we know that He is always faithful and that His promises are yes and amen. But sometimes we still look at all the mess in front of us that we can't see the goodness of God. And our memory verse today that Sunay taught us was, O oh, taste, so like tasting the sour lemon, I'm not going to taste it again, and see that the Lord is good because He is good. He is a good God. And he wants to show us his goodness every single day. But we need to be looking in the right place. We need to be looking not at the distractions happening around us, like the coronavirus, like the problems we're facing at school, the problems at home. God doesn't want us to be focusing on that. He wants to keep our eyes on him. Because if we keep our eyes on him, we will see his goodness and we will see his faithfulness. So I'm going to pray for us and I want you all to close your eyes and ask, we're going to ask God to show us right now something good that he's done in your life during this time. Because the, the enemy and the world has given us coronavirus in 2020. But what has God given us? God for the church has given us the opportunity. I never ever thought that I would be recording live lessons for you guys. Um, Uncle Gornay never thought that he would be doing sermons from his lounge 
Um, there is so many wonderful things that has come out of being in lockdown, being in restrictions, but we don't always see that because we're looking at all the other things. We can't go to the beach, we can't go camping, we can't go to school. But what if we keep our eyes on God, we will see good things that He has done. So everybody quickly close your eyes. So dear Jesus, will you please come and show us something good that we have not seen that you have done for us in this last couple of weeks? Will you remind the children of your goodness and help us this week that we can see your faithfulness and your goodness in our love, in lives each day? So I, I'm sure by now you guys have seen a picture or a feeling that God has, and God has reminded you of some of the good things. That he, and it can be simple things. It doesn't have to be huge things. Just waking up in the morning and going into your garden and seeing beautiful flowers or just being able to see the sunlight. That is all God's goodness. So I hope you guys are going to be having an amazing week this week. Some of you might be getting going back to school or doing some schoolwork from home again from tomorrow. I'm praying for all of you that it will, it will be easy and it won't be stressful. And when we look again, this will all be gone. Because And you kids can start praying for this coronavirus to go away. Because that is how powerful you are. But next week we're going to be start talking about all of that. So I love you guys and I hope you're all going to have an amazing week. Bye.